Hi, I'm Joyce Hinterding. And I'm David Haynes. And we're coming to you today from the Blue Mountains on Gundungurra and Darug country, which is where we work and live. In our journeys for the work that we're doing, we're often in Wiradjuri country. We started collaborating in 1999 on a, we did a residency at Bruni Island in the lighthouse there. And we made the first work we made together was a work called Levitation Grounds. And we also realized that with the two of us, you could make art and have a really big adventure at the same time. We've seen an un, uh, unfathomable range of development in technology as well, you know, from the early days of VHS and super VHS video editing, for example, in the analog space all the way through the digital era. For me, um, the thing that has, I guess, has driven my work forward is the phenomena sympathetic resonance, yeah. the ability for one vibrating body to affect another and the, those relationships. So sympathetic resonance kind of formed a starting point originally with acoustics and then in my work, in my own work and then obviously work with David has been translated into uh, working with antenna of all kinds of shapes and sizes. And then one of the things about working with David is we walk into all of these places and I walk in with him and one of the things that's really appeared for me is thinking about all these structures and this environment and about how nature is actually preceding technology. It's, it's a little bit like, to coin Douglas Kahn, uh, radio wasn't invented, it was discovered. You know, it was already there. We just didn't know how to, to work with it. I reckon for me, there's any number of um, directions, but I mean, thermodynamics is really important. So, you know, if you work with aroma, it's a thermodynamic art. It, it's, it's about having a low state of entropy in a bottle and then releasing it into the atmosphere and then changing the atmosphere. So, and thermodynamics really, it, you know, is so tied to the tunings of art. In some instances, we've done all these performances where I gather the uh, the source material coming from, in live from yeah. the environment, and then um, send it to David, and then he manipulates it. It's like that. That's the meeting point again. You know, like between like ordered information on one side, which is what artists do. They compose stuff. Mm. and then raw material coming in like a big pipeline on the other side and suddenly we could do something one night which is more like music concrete. You know, it becomes, there's a musical dimension to it. When you start up a computer, <laughs> it goes through a boot sequence and it throws out all this data as, and signal. It actually sort of goes <laughs> oh, so if you're listening to it through a wire rather through than a, a antenna, microphone. Through an antenna, through a very low frequency antenna, you can hear it kind of like boot itself up. And so we um, did these performances where we were booting all the computers up and then David would then manipulate that into boot sequence electromagnetic energy coming out of the computers yeah. and then it would become rhythmic and structured as it kind of evolved. At the end of the day, it's all just composition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we think that artists don't have an exclusive license on creativity. You know, the, that, that belongs to the world, but we're just taking raw material that interests us and then we're kind of formally arranging it in a way that excites us. And then we just hope that other people are able to enter that space as well. So, yeah, I don't have any um, huge expectations for art, but I think it's really important that it exists because it's such an interesting way to get to know the world. Art is slow knowledge, so, you know, you might not necessarily get it straight away, but perhaps it'll circulate around to someone who really wants to know about that stuff. We're out filming in our favourite places and we're using exclusively a camera which has been modified 
so that it sees beyond the visible light spectrum. So it's seeing through the infrared all the way through up to ultraviolet. So normally um, in the electromagnetic spectrum, we've got visible light, which we all recognize as color. But the camera itself, its sensor can see beyond that. So it can see infrared through a big range of the infrared up to ultraviolet. So we're getting this different view of the world straight up through the camera. David and I have spent a lot of time canyoning and uh, whitewater pack rafting in the remote and wild rivers of the Greater Blue Mountains. And so that, that really informs this work. The thing that was really uh, interesting to me is the fact that the water ascends in the Blue Mountains. So it ascends through uh, aquifers. And so you have at the top of these, sort of at 1,000 metres above sea level, you have this incredibly pure water that is um, the water that goes into the canyons. There's quite a strange thing there. So the water ascends and then descends. So we started to sort of daydream about could we condense water? But it brought up this larger question about where does water come from? And water, <laughs> water, where does it come from? Um, I think, you know, it's such a simple sort of thought, H2O. Couldn't you just make it? Couldn't you just join? Isn't there a way to join it back together again? And of course there isn't. It takes enormous amount of energy and a big explosion to make water. But um, on the question of where does the water come from in the first place, it comes from asteroids. So this is another one of these really strange thoughts about things that have come from out of space that have descended here. So back at the muon detectors, what we're really interested in with the cosmic rays is, is this is stuff that's coming from outer space every day. It's just passing through us. The muons, neutrinos, something stop. Neutrinos keep going. There's a lot of research on them because they're not sure where they're coming from. And that I think it's really amazing that outer space is just, something from outer space is just passing straight through well, us. Well, also the evolutionary um, like influence on RNA and DNA um, in, in, with cosmic rays is really interesting. The idea that there's this sort of sprinkling rain that is just slowly shifting, um, you know, systems. Yeah. That's that. You know, I, I see it as a kind of cosmic soundtrack. It's it's cosmic rain for me, <laughs> and um, everyone should get to hear that.